Today we are very, very excited to have Brad Oliver in the house at Amity. Brad is our double national and international champion in level 5, uh, inclusive physical independent figure ice skating. That's a big mouthful, but hey, hang on for it, it's worth it. He got his first championship, uh, he, he got his first champion in September uh, last year, 2019 and his second gold champion in uh, January 2020, just recently only. So today we are very, very lucky to have uh, Brad over here to have a chat with us to find out what does it take to be a ice skating figure champion. Brad, how are you today? Fine, thank you. Thank you very much for coming in today. That's fine. And I uh, just wanted to ask you, know, tell us a little bit more about your background, including your family, like where you grew up, how old are you? and your disability as well, and your hobbies, and uh, yeah, tell, tell us a little more about you. Uh, from Devon, yeah. uh, with, with my brother, I play the guitar, I hobbies are more guitar and gym, I love the gym too much. Um, How old are you? Oh, uh, I'm 17, nearly. And um, what do you enjoy doing? Stop reading on the question. What do you enjoy doing for the conversation? More, I enjoy ice skating more yeah. than anything, definitely. Good. How did you get into this figure ice skating? Because that is not a straightforward thing and not a very common thing for um, you know 17 year old boys to do. How did you get into it? Who inspired How? How? I was watching this program called Jiri on Ice, all about ice skating. Me and my friend was watching it at the same time. Uh, we both went ice skating, Yay. and on the second time around, I slipped on my blades and passed out on the ice. So mum said I had to have safety lessons before I could go back on. And um, so really it was your mum who sort of uh, got you towards ice skating when, when you yeah. first saw the program on television. Yes. And um, tell us a little bit more about your sort of uh, disability, because you said yeah, there was a disability involved. Yeah, it's parts, but I have so many dis different disabilities, I'm actually a swan as well. Sorry, what exactly does it mean by a port? Uh, POTS is postural stacky tachycardi syndrome. Okay. It's like you get fatigue and that, and MS is involved. Right, so for somebody who doesn't know any sort of medical knowledge, what exactly is a postural stacky cardi syndrome? It's um, so you get very fatigued very fast. Mm. You've got uh, your heart races when you stand up. Right. Like my heart rate can jump from 100 to 200 instantly. It wow. varies. I, the cold makes it better, hence ice skating is easier for me yeah. to deal with. Okay, and when you say you're a swan, what exactly do you mean by that? So, swan is a syndrome without a name. Okay. So, it's like I've got different parts of different elements from different conditions, so they're not all part linked together, so that's why I'm a swan. Right, and so what would be your, say, minus ice skating, what, what's a challenge in your everyday life? Like, uh, what exactly do you mean by living with a disability? What does that look like? Patient, you've got very much patience with it. Some days I can be knocked out for ages, I still use a wheelchair sometimes. So, how does it affect your daily life? Like, uh, like, uh, what are you able or what are you not able to do that we'll presume a seventeen-year-old boy to do? There's not much difference. Like, uh, I'm not allowed to go out on my own at the moment, just in case I have an episode. But that's pretty much it. When you say an episode, what exactly do you mean by that? Like, I could my heart rate can go up so high I lose my eyesight because it goes over past two hundred and ten. I lose my eyesight. When did you first discover you had this? Uh, seven months old. So you've been pretty much living yeah. this since, as far as you can remember, really. Yeah. And how often has this happened? Not often as much now. It's died down since ice skates made me healthier. So okay. because of the cold, I'm in the cold more. Mm. I don't have those symptoms as much. Okay. See, so when you were a child, you know, when you were, say, you know, ten years old. How often did it affect you then? Oh, always. It was mostly four or five times every other day. And oh. I, was in a wheel I was mostly in a wheelchair up until two years ago. 
That is not easy. Yeah. Mr. Preetha, so who has been helping you? My see mom. Mom's been helping. And you mentioned you had a brother. Is it an older brother or a younger brother? brother? Yeah. He yeah. drives me to like, the gym. We go to the gym together sometimes. Um, and you take me down to ice skating at night because it's like I do mornings and night sometimes. How did you feel when you were in that situation, you know, experiencing those um, being in a wheelchair and seeing probably your friends, you know, running around and not being able to join help? Frustrating. Yeah. Very frustrating. Mm-hmm. Um, not as much now. I, I'm able to not, I can do more than 20 minutes activity. Some days I can do two hours on the ice, some days I can only do half an hour. Mm-hmm. Okay, and um, at the point of time before you found ice, how did you um, manage your frustrations? Um, take it easy, step by step, uh, pacing more than anything. Yeah. It's certainly not an easy thing to learn when you're so young, isn't it, on top of everything else. Um, who do you think has been a sort of greatest influence in your life to talk about pacing? Definitely, Mum. Yeah. Mum rains me when I'm going too overboard on the ice. Yeah. Okay. And now that you have found um, ice skating, and that seems to have helped you quite a lot medically, and uh, how has it helped you sort of uh, psychologically? A lot better. I'm more able to hold conversations more mm-hmm. as well, because like when you're in a wheelchair, you don't have many people come up to you and talk to you, so the ice mm-hmm. is made so much different difference to my life. How do you see, like, um, example, when you say people coming up to talk, talk to you, so where, where do they talk to you? Are you recognised on the streets or? I have been three or four times uh, around Devon. Uh, on ice, I have people come up to me and say, can you just show us what you can do? Uh, I'm learning ice skating, I want to be like you. So I go, when I'm down there, I just demonstrate what I can do and try and encourage them as well. That certainly would have brought you to a different place compared to before you found ice skating. Yeah. Isn't it? That is a pretty amazing. So tell me more about this ice skating because I'm very, very intrigued of how you know how you've overcome all your difficulties from sitting in a wheelchair, having episodes relying on your mother and you, you, know, you can't go out for too long and you can't be out on your own and things like that. So tell us a little bit about your like, like first six months of skating, how was that like? I picked it up pretty fast. They do a Skate UK 1 to 8 and then they do bronze to gold. So for 1 to 8, I started at level 4 mm. and I was going up a level every two weeks. Wow. And on level 6, I was doing jumps. So in a month, I was doing spins and I only just started doing jumps. That's, is that quite normal or is that no, very fun? rare? Very, very yeah. rare. And like, um, so to have an example, were you in a one-to-one class or were you in a group class? I started or? off with a group class and once I got to the gold to, bro- uh, gold to s- bronze to gold, um, I had to start doing private classes because there was no uh, group sessions that you could do those sessions in. How did it make you feel to be almost a single out? Okay, because you can, then that's able I've been able to go on the ice early in the mornings yeah. so I can start at 6 o'clock and have a lesson at 8 and then carry on until 10 if I wanted to. How were you feeling internally? Like when you found out that you know you went for a group skating class, this group of people over there, then suddenly week by week you're jumping a grade, everything like that, and presumably your counterparts were not jumping there until to a point whereby you had your own individual private teacher. How did it make you feel internally? It was different at the start. It was exciting because I was able to do more. Then I started working on tests because they do a one to ten test and you go off and there's three exams for each level. Yeah. Did you feel more confident? Yeah, definitely. Oh. Yeah. W- w- was there any fear that your disability would hold you back? No. I just yeah. went for it. And uh, talk to me a little bit. What's your training schedule look like? So you train how often? Uh, once a week uh, down in Plymouth, but sometimes it can be in two, mm-hmm. or I'll be up in Sully Hall every other week. Mm-hmm. And how long, uh, how long is uh, each uh, session? It varies from an hour and a half to two hours, but some days my health dictates it. It'll be like half an hour, half an hour off, and I'll be back on the ice for half an hour. 
Okay. How often how often are you not able to fulfill your entire training session? Um sometimes it's like once a month, sometimes two a month, but varies. Okay. And um, when you say that, you know, when you're doing so figure skating, do you have you got a team with you or is it purely individual sport? So when I'm down in Plymouth mm. it's just me mm. and then there's like others on the ice at the same time. Mm. Uh, when I'm up in Plymouth uh, when I'm up in Sully Hole, mm. there's a like an inclusive group, mm. and they do um, like training together because they're part of the uh, like GB team mm. for going away to abroad. And that I was mm. able, I was able to go to abroad last year, but they gave me two days notice, and we couldn't find sponsors. <laughs> Okay, that's a little bit harsh, yeah. right? <laughs> but there you go. So speaking of sponsors, have you have you sort of uh, explored outside ice skating? Have you been sort of offered any sponsorship or? Not yet. I put myself out there more now to try and yeah. get sponsors because I've got two possibilities of going abroad this year. So mm -hmm. one's Finland and America. Mm -hmm. So achieving a double gold medals, you know, that that's a pretty impressive achievement, really. Could you tell me a little bit of a journey from you know sort of from the start to when you first thought that okay that is possible, okay so when you first started training for it, how was your journey like until achieving it? I didn't find out about the uh, competition. I done my first exam. I found out and GB coach came over and said there's an inclusive uh, disabled uh, competition coming up. Would you like to give it a go? Mm. Uh, I had two weeks to learn a routine. And I didn't realise it was an international competition, and it, I thought it was just British competition. Mm -hmm. I said to my mum, oh, I'll just wing it. I said, if I do well, I'll do well. And then when I got uh, went up to receive the medal and trophy, they told me it was an international competition as well. So you didn't even realise that you were competing internationally? No. You just thought it was potentially regionally or nationally? Yeah. And, uh, Oh, okay. So how did you feel when you actually found out that it was an international competition? Excited. I was really ha happy. And then I wanted to do more. I wanted to compete more. Mm. And presumably this was uh, for the gold medal that you achieved in September. And after that, what was the journey like before? Before that. Oh no, sorry. Uh, after, uh, after that, sorry. Good, before your the second gold medal. Um, do you feel different? different. It was different because mm. I was able to go for a competition more than an exam. It's like mm -hmm. exams, they take like a month or two to learn. Mm -hmm. And with competitions, they're like, it's, you have to be ready for the next one that can be at any time. What drives you to do competitions like this? Because it takes up a lot of time and your energy and considering disability, what sort of a pushes you to say that, okay, I want to do this despite not feeling 100%. Show people that they can do stuff with disability, even if someone says they can't, they can. And why is that important to you? I've been told that I can't do many things, like they say I'm not meant to do more than 20 minutes activity, and that's not a good day. So now I'm pushing myself more to be able to do more lengths of time of activity, and I'm still able to do some activity on a bad day now. So that's what pushes me to inspire others. And how, how are you inspiring others right now, like, uh, apart from being there? I we share videos on Facebook and that. Um, recently we popped up, we tagged in the uh, music uh, bands that I use their music for for competitions and started posting it that way with the video link. So other people can see it, and it's like Heart Foundation and that show send them to them, so they can actually see what's going on. Oh, okay, that's very. Have you have you got a ritual before each competition or training session? I go off in the corner, listen to music, and Mum just taps me when I'm meant to be getting on the ice, pull them out, and jump on. Is there any particular music you listen to? Uh, just relaxed music like meditation and that. So I don't have the nerves of getting on the ice. How long does that ritual usually take? Um, they give me like five minutes. So I've got to be at the ice for within five minutes, mm. like waiting to get on. So those five minutes, I'm just sat in the corner waiting. And have you got any sort of um, fasting or diet sort of rituals before that? No, not at the moment. 
with ice skating you can eat as much as you want because in two hours I can burn 2,000 calories so I've burnt my intake for the day. What? How? <laughs> it's just from doing jumps, spins, because you'll spin so fast you're putting so much strain on one leg and you're working out more than anything when because you've got to have your core activated the whole time. Oh, I think that is a... Well, if people can start doing the spins, that is one thing that people want to do to burn calories so they can uh, eat more, yeah. <laughs> so to speak. Um, what's your favourite food? Cake, that's my downfall. Yeah? yeah. It's sweet food, it's my biggest downfall. What sort of cake? Like uh, chocolate, it has to be chocolate. Yeah, it has to be chocolate, yeah. And um, like, uh, what, uh, when you say downfall, like, um, how bad is bad of this craving like, for cake? Go on. I would crave it every day. If I had it in the house, I would eat it. Is there any particular brand you like? No, any cake. Yeah? Any <laughs> Excellent. For a sort of a aspiring um, uh, athletes out there who potentially have a disability, what sort of a secret or what sort of advice would you give them? Beating the impossible is fun. How do you mean? Well, um, be set when uh, like a doctor of science says, oh, you can't do that. You go off and do it. Come back and say, I've done this. I've proved you wrong. It's more you have more of a fulfilling of uh, proof to yourself as well. And what apart from that, what advice would you get them to take in terms of uh, what advice would you get them to take in terms of action to be able to push on to the next stage? Let's say there's uh, someone an uh, athlete with a disability. And they want to do better. I mean, for you, obviously, you've gone all the way from scratch to all the way to champion. Um, what sort of advice would you get them to take? I slowly, at the start, I would do like 10 minutes. And then uh, within two weeks, I bumped up to 20. And I'd done that for a while until I was able to stretch it to two hours. Mm -hmm. And I, it's better for me now it's two hours because I'm able to actually stay on the ice longer for practice, like 10 minutes practice is like nothing. You do like two minutes warm up, you've got eight minutes to practice something. So it's just a sort of slowly incremental, incremental. increases, yeah. Um, and is there any sort of organization body that you would sort of advise them to look for, for you know, to push on their uh, passion further? So I can answer that, is that a question? Is there, is there anybody that, I mean, is there any organizations, is there any professional bodies that say that, okay, look, I'm disabled, I want to do something different like golf or archery. Is there somewhere that they can actually go to get more guidance? Because uh, a lot of people, they want to do something, but they actually have no idea how. Um, inclusive Skating, they've got uh, information on their like, website. Um, you can have, you can ask, you can email them and they'll get back to you within a week or sometimes 24 hours if they're not busy. It depends if there's competition on that time. Um, other than that, I do PT sessions once a month to make sure I'm doing not just uh, lower body strength because when you're ice skating, you're just working your legs. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure you're not going to be like portion. You need to be portioned out more. Mm -hmm. like, I could, if I didn't do, go to the gym, I'll just have big legs and a small torso. It wouldn't look very good on ice. You've got to portion everything out. And um, what what would, uh, and and okay, this only if you know, only if you know, based on your own experience, what three characteristics or character traits? Would you would you think would be um, essential for a champion ice skater? Uh, falling pain, that's the one main thing. You'll always fall over on the ice. Uh, just get back up, carry on. Um, get so if you can use their like, their surround system, put some good music on, motivation music. That's brilliant because you just carry on. Um, what is that? What about internal characteristics? What has a person got to have? Dedication. A lot of dedication. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else? Believe in themselves. Dedication and belief is the main thing they need. Um, and um, any last one? <laughs> dedication and self belief. And. Um, how, how do you feel now that you've proven something that a lot of people said that you couldn't really achieve and you have uh, done just that? 
uh, happy and I want to prove more now, I want to go further. When you say further, what, what are your dreams? What is your aspiration? Uh, hopefully Olympics. I have been on their watch list now, so that'd be nice to like them to come along and say, yes, you've been selected and I can get to go to the Paralympics and that, that'd be nice. And uh, how old do you have to be to get to the Olympics? It's anywhere from like 17 up, so oh, right, okay. coming so into, really. yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. coming into the bracket because I'm they do like junior and yeah. senior, yeah. so they'll do like a junior competition and a um, senior one. Very, very good. <laughs> okay, and I'm um, just talking a little bit about fudge. So, how do you feel about fudge? What does oh, fudge mean to you? Everything to me. She's my best friend, caring companion. And how long have you known Fudge? Since birth, so 10 years. Yeah. And um, what does she bring to you? Like, what do you go to her for? Describe support. what your experience is like. With more, her. She's there for support. She's more of support. Yeah. And uh, does she come watch your ice skating? She hasn't been on the, like, at the rink yet. I'm hoping to get on the rink. If we get another dog, I'm going to try and push to get both of them on the rink. <laughs> and uh, has has Fudge actually been on ice before? Uh, only on like little bits, sort of walking around, but not actual ice. There's probably a lot of things you've got to teach her then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Brett. That was uh, very, very interesting. And um, Brett Oliver, watch out, future potential Olympic champion at MIT. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, it's cool.